obvious disappointment. What was your post-game message in the locker room? Well, it was twofold. It was number one, uh, we had to, all week long we had stressed the fact that we are prepared to take on any difficult situation, that we had worked hard enough to overcome any bad play, any if a call didn't go our way, if um, we had an injury or whatnot, that we were capable of doing so. Uh, but the flip side of that, also understanding that the margin of error against a team like this gets smaller and smaller. Um, but we still had opportunities to close out the game. We didn't do so. Um, proud of the effort. I mean, proud of the effort. The effort, uh, and the, these guys left it all on the field uh, like we expected them to. And proud of that part, um, but also understanding that we have to get on a plane here in about six days and keep playing conference play. And so there's no one over in, in Berkeley going to feel sorry for us. So we've got to get in here, watch the film, learn lessons, uh, improve, clean up some things, uh, and at the same time understand that, look, we – had an opportunity uh, against number seven team in the country and, and had some really, really good moments. We just got to be more consistent. Mario, you had first down inside their, their side of the field. You could have, is there any consideration of kneeling the football instead of running it on second and on two? We're trying to get one more first down with second and two. You know, it's a play that we feel good about. Two tights over that side, two hands on the ball. It's, uh, it's first down, the game's over. If uh, you could kneel it, uh, you're going to have to punt the ball. If you don't get a first down, they're going to use another timeout. You're going to get it back. I don't know what the, the charts at the time. But you have to punt the ball, and you have to execute a punt as well, which, uh, you know, we feel confident in our guys. I mean, be aggressive. Um, that's why we threw the ball on first down, and that's why we, uh, you know, went after certain situations like we did. Mario, uh, the m momentum really f switched with that bad snap. Did you get a chance to talk to Jake and what happened on that? And yeah, second I, part of that, you were able to get it back with that fourth down stop. If you could just discuss kind of the back and forth craziness of that whole corner. Yeah, the uh, the snap itself. It's hard. I haven't seen the film yet, but it looked like it was high. You know, Jake's pretty consistent with his snaps, but that one, it looked like it was high and went off of uh, Justin's hands. And so obviously that thing uh, it switched some momentum. You know, it got things going that way, and then. You know, a stop, and then eventually we have an opportunity to go by 10, and uh, we do, but they, they get back in it as well. So uh, a lot of back and forth in this game, and I think uh, a lot of things showed up. A lot of things showed up in a positive way um, that this team is probably not ready to do about a year ago. You know, we're, we're able to, uh, to compete and be at moments in the game in control of a game uh, that we have an opportunity to put away. Uh, but at the same time, again, some mistakes showed up there at the end that, you know, we got to clean up. We got to clean them up fast. Back left, Steve. Mauro, you talking about that stop on third down. Did you feel kind of through about 55 minutes your defense had kind of given you what you wanted? And then obviously the, the big play to our Sega gets them going and then come right back down to the field. But would you feel like for those first 55 that you got what you wanted out of that side? I, I'm proud of our defense. I know there's they, I know they made some plays in the passing game. I mean, you know, that's the obvious part of it. But I'm going to shoot straight and always be honest. I mean, our guys played really hard, did a great job against the run. Uh, those those are big matchup issues. You know, those are big guys with a lot of length, a lot of range, and um, and they got us. They got us with some big plays. So, you know, we got to continue finding ways to help alleviate that. You know, for some of our corners, uh, they, we played a lot of man coverage, which is part of stopping the run. Um, and they got us on a few plays. But you know, like I told them in there, I don't want to. I don't want to sit and you know start telling the guy, hey, because you didn't do this or you didn't do that. You know, we we didn't have the success we wanted. It's um, you know, it's football when things don't don't end up like you want them to. You better galvanize it and bring it together. And stay away from the cliches and the nonsense, and make sure that your team uh, understands that you're proud of the effort, uh, and the execution. And in some instances, has to improve, but you're gonna stay 100% real. Uh, Coach, 51 seconds left. He had second and three you could have forced them to take another timeout and then ran down the clock. And they had no timeouts left. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you have run the clock out right there? We, they still have some time. We'd have to punt the ball at some point in time. Less than 10 seconds left? No, I probably 12, 15 seconds. I'm not sure what it was. I'll check the chart for you. I'll give you the exact data. You know, we got nothing to hide. So, but we felt we were pretty good about the run game. We need one more to get uh, first down and close out the game. We've been pretty good with that, so. You've talked a lot about winning the battle in the trenches and the physicality that you've brought to this team. Do you feel like tonight 
you showed Oregon football 2.0 that you've spoken about? I think in a lot of ways we did. At the line of scrimmage, uh, particularly in the first half and then in moments in the fourth quarter, uh, did a really nice job up front on both sides of the ball, running the ball and defending the run. Um, certainly have improved uh, in that sense and um, you know look to continue to build upon that. Coach, this is a relatively young team uh, trying to get back to national prominence. How do you think it is equipped mentally to recover from such a disappointing loss? Well, that to me is the biggest part that you have to address and that you have to make sure you do your best work at as a coach because, like you said, there's a lot of young guys out there. I believe we have 10 seniors or something of that nature, and it could be uh, very difficult and devastating for a lot. I know certainly that we all feel it. Um, but like we talked about in there, there's no one feeling sorry for us on the other side of the conference and on the other side over there in California. And, and we are going to have to immediately get back to work at this. The sun's going to come up tomorrow. Um, we have things that we have to clean up. And we have a really good team that's undefeated with an extra week to prepare for us, waiting for us in Berkeley. Uh, C CJ is a young player, and, and I'm sure he's beating himself up over this. But how, how do you kind of address to him, you know, those two fumbles? Is, is that something yeah. like basically how, how is he handling that right now? Well, you can imagine, you know, that's a really tough deal for him. Um, I love CJ and our players like my very own son. OK, so I want to make sure that's absolutely clear. And, and I told him that in the locker room. Yes, he's going to beat himself up and competitors will do that, especially in moments like this. Um, especially as hard as he was running, okay, uh, he did. He he made a he made a mistake. He made a mistake. The ball got away from his body um, when you know it didn't have to. And um, but no one's going to point a finger at him. The whole locker room's going to love him up, um, and we're going to have to build up his confidence again it's because he's a really good football player, and we stick by our players. Two parts here, Mario. From a coaching standpoint, on Jalen's run where he hits the pylon there, how do you teach that? Because on one hand, if he dives for it and it goes out, that's a touchback. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's hard to say you must stay in bounds. I mean, the body's going that direction. So from a coaching standpoint, how do you try to correct that if you can? And not to belabor the point on the second and three and the time there at the end, but mm -hmm. could you not have taken a safety, set up a safety punt with less than 10 seconds to go and at least force him to have to go the whole field for a touchdown in less than 10 seconds? Uh, you could do a lot of things looking back on it. Uh, first thing with Jalen, you know, we watched the A&M clip a couple weeks ago when they reached out the ball and it popped out the back and ended up being a touchback for them. So, um, you know, I know we've – it's something that he'll tell you. We've we've repped it. We've uh, done it, talked about it or whatnot. And then on the next play, we put in our best goal line uh, – our best goal line play, our most physical and powerful goal line play. And uh, the ball came off the hip of the of the running back. And then after that – you know, issue. So, um, and then in terms of uh, CJ was second and three, and we felt good about getting downhill with the run, and so we did. And we need to keep working on protecting the ball. Uh, are there other ways to look at it? Yeah, you could look at it some other ways, but uh, you're gonna have to punt, or you're gonna have to get a first down. We decided to go with the first down, and so I did. Mario. Just, and honest on that, man, look, we're going to be aggressive, man. You know, I mean, it's aggressive and it's and in our eyes when our offensive line is playing like it did against them and you're knocking people off the ball, you, you trust your guys to get it done. And, uh, you know, a lot of things could go a lot of different ways and it's easy to second guess after. But, man, you know what? Just like the fourth down over there, we're, we're, we're going to play football. Mario, can you think of a, a time in your career when you had to rally a team from a loss like this and how do you approach it do you get in the film tonight or do you get away from it for a little bit how do you approach it personally yeah, i get in the film right away because i got to look at both sides and special teams so that part doesn't stop for them the most important thing is is support is support because i mean this game a year ago was 42 to 7 49 7 something of that nature right so i think what they clearly clearly understand is that uh, we've closed the gap significantly uh, to the point where you have a chance to close them out right and walk away with a victory and then the other part to that is that bottom line is we didn't so there's no consolation prize and not looking for one but uh, also understanding that this conference is wide open wide open and you have got to get back on it right away and, and you've got to shake it off and shake it off fast because you can't let this thing beat you twice right we end up giving it up today you can't let it beat you again next week because we're hanging on it for a whole week
Is it any more difficult knowing how well Justin played and just how you guys weren't able to capitalize on his performance? No, I wouldn't tell. A loss is a loss. I, it doesn't. Um, we really don't put much weight or stock into who played well or who didn't. So, you know, um, so I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think that makes a difference. The kind of the game plan Were you guys expecting Mitchell to be this involved in the passing game, and then what do you make of Justin's play as well? We did, you know, we um, you know, we played three weeks of football leading up to this, and um, you know, did some things and kind of held some things back, and you know, the things that we did tonight not only are they good schematically against a against a team that we play, but also more part of our playbook and what we do. So um, it was good to see him get loose like he did. He was uh, he really played a heck of a game, played hard. Uh, made some really, really big plays for us, and uh, we're going to need that going forward. That's outstanding. You know, he really was. And, uh, you know, like like all the other quarterbacks in the conference, at some point, part, they, they got to run, you know, and he did, and he did a really good job. Doesn't mean you game plan inside runs with him, um, but, you know, he's going to help us win with his feet as well. Back left, Steve. Back on Dylan, just – like you say, you mentioned spreading around those first three. Was there the thought, though, that at this point, Dylan is sort of the, the go-to guy or the guy that you can target that many times or want to rather than spreading around as much as you did those first few? Well, he certainly proved tonight how dynamic he can be, um, especially when teams are playing a lot of man coverage on him. There was some zone stuff, too, where he, he did a nice job finding some soft spots in the coverage. But, um, yeah, he's, you know, we, we've always felt that he could be that guy. Uh, it was great to see him get loose like he did tonight. And um, we expect it to uh, continue to improve. All right, Tyson. Time for two more. I think you guys just had one time out at one time out at the time, but the play where Thomas stripped the guy, or looked like he stripped the guy, and looked like a fumble, was that reviewable, or was it was it whistled dead? What I, I couldn't. I've always the asked the official whenever it's anything that's close, and he says they're reviewing it, they're reviewing it, and they feel it's not. So I saved the time out on it. Yeah, you talked about uh, getting the guys ready next week. How reliant will you be on, you know, players like Justin, other leaders on this team from a player standpoint to make sure they're ready to go next week? At we, we asked them right away in the locker room to make sure that uh, it's it's very loud and clear. Look, the, the best thing you could do with your players from the beginning is be real. So when adversity hits like this, you stay real. There's no changing gears in that manner. So Justin, uh, Justin Hollins, Jalen Jelks, you know, Shane Lemieux, all those guys, um, you know, first thing is we are here as coaches to support them through the loss. And at the same time, then they are locker room leaders where they help galvanize and help us move on to the next thing. Because win or lose, you're going to have to move on to the next one in a hurry. Well, this one stings. It is painful. We all understand that. But we have when we wake up in the morning, we have got to move and we have got to move fast because there's one heck of a team waiting for us in Berkeley.